Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, et spes nostra salve. Ad te clamamus, exules filii hebe, ad te suspiramus, gementes et lentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordes oculos, Ad nos converte. Et Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clement, O Welcome everyone on this octave of Easter that we continue to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. We hear this constant good news, the power of the Holy Spirit, and how the early church continues in their experiences with the encounter of the risen Lord to have hearts that are transformed. It's powerful, it's beautiful, it's exciting. It's the gift of our faith. Now, on this Friday of the octave, we're gonna find a famous fishing story with St. Peter and some of the disciples. We'll talk about that in the homily today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard of the Sadducees, confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem, when Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class, they brought them into their presence and questioned them. By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, that all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy, mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Will he bless you from the house of the Lord? The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. 
He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to him, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat. You'll find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over, dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I'm going fishing. Love that line. You go, what, what is he dealing with? What is he talking about? What's going on here? And as they're out fishing, just a couple of quick reminders. You go fishing on the Sea of Galilee at night. At night is when you put out your nets. And as soon as the sunlight hits that water, you pull in your nets. Because that's when you're going to haul in any fish if they've come into the nets. If you don't catch it, right at dawn, you ain't going to have any fish. So they don't have nothing. It's dawn, there's nothing. And then Jesus does this, throw the nets back out. 153. Oh. Scholars will say that at that time, that was like the known number of fish that were identified. So it's a symbolic number. They caught the totality, which replies and refers to how the Lord's saving death and resurrection applies to the totality of all the human race, all the nations, all peoples. What I want to note today, though, in this is how Jesus takes the initiative it's Jesus on the shore who calls to them. It's Jesus from the shore who invites them to cast their net. It's Jesus who's going to feed them and direct them to bring even some of the fish that they just caught. In every step, it's Jesus who's in control, who takes the initiative, who brings that revelation of his resurrection further one more time. And what Jesus does for these disciples, the Lord does for us. The Lord continues to reveal himself to our lives and in our hearts in countless ways. We who claim to be disciples are invited then to be on the watch for how is God knocking on the door of our heart today? How is God continuing to be revealed into our minds, our hearts, our lives, our relationships? How do we continue to see where God is at work prompting, leading, strengthening, inspiring, and helping us to face whatever comes before us? Where do we see the Lord prompting us and inviting us to take the next step? Because friends, the Lord continues to knock. The Lord continues to reach out to us. And the interesting thing is, it happens in all of these different moments. I love this. It happens during a fishing story. It can happen when life is going great. It can happen when all hell breaks loose. It can happen around friends and loved ones and close connections. It can happen with strangers. 
It can happen in chance encounters. Are our eyes open? Because they didn't get it at first. But then suddenly, it's that revelation, that realization. It's the Lord. It's the Lord who's prompting, the Lord who's knocking, the Lord who's calling. And if it works for them, then we too can have that same awareness. Lord, where do I see you today? Lord, help me to find you at work in my life today. And Lord, help me to continue to kind of keep that radar going. It says, I'm looking to see how you are present in my life yet again. Because the minute we begin to cultivate that awareness through our prayer, through our sacraments, through our study of the scriptures, we will begin to see with greater and greater clarity how God continues to be present in our life. Today, may our eyes be open to see the Lord and respond to the call that we will live the gift of our faith with Easter joy. God help us. God bless us all. Pray this day for the church that in the glow of the octave of Easter with the resurrection joy that fills our hearts that we will live the gift of our faith with full power. We pray to the Lord. Pray in this day for babies that were born premature little ones that are fighting for their lives in NIC units. I pray for all those that are caring for them, loving up on them, that little babies cared for, cherished, and esteemed will grow strong and healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Pray for all families that are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially during the Easter season where you have this contrast and yet you have this hope. For all those who've lost loved ones, who are grieving right now, that the resurrection will give them the strength to carry on as they entrust their loved ones to the hands of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. I get to do First Communions this weekend and next weekend, and then it, later on in May through the Easter season, so I'm praying for all the kids who are preparing for those great sacraments, that as they encounter Jesus in the sacrament of the altar, that they will continue to receive Jesus as their parents and their family members support them in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray this day for the intention of this Mass. John Hardy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, for all of you at home, for those of you who've added your prayers to the comment line, for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, 
and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all, during this sacred time, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Augustine, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Keep safe, O oh Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A couple of announcements. So as we continue our registration for Cathedral School, I just want to remind people to direct your calls to the school office. When we get them over at the church office, we will send you over to the school. But it's always about just directing questions, inquiry, and if you need information. So for folks who are watching, if you've got grandkids, when we're getting these, these questions, we want to make sure you can get exactly what you're looking for. Call the Cathedral School office directly. And again, we're excited. Uh, great things were able to happen this year. And we're looking to build on that. So for all from pre-K, three and four-year-olds through eighth grade. Now with our kids in this season of the year, also ask for prayers for, as I mentioned, the children who are making their first communions. This is that busy time. And just for a moment, do you remember when you made your first communion? For some, it might have been a little ancient history, but for some reason, it tends to stay with us. Pray for these children. Pray for their families, that as they receive Jesus in the sacrament, that the Lord will bless them and help them as a family to continue now, you know, as things are slowly starting to open up and with vaccinations, for families to come to church and feel safe and comfortable. But pray for these kids and hold them close in your thoughts. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great day.